Hey folks, welcome back. Hope everybody is doing well. Today what we're going to do is take a look at the density of gases. And we have uh, some equations that will help us to describe the density of gases and they are related to the molar mass of a gas. And so to show you the calculations on this, the last time we got together we had the ideal gas law. And the ideal gas law looked like this where we have PV equals nRT. PV equals nRT. And we know also that density is equal to mass over volume. So the question is, can we arrange this equation somehow to give us mass over volume? And the answer is actually yes. So if we rearrange PV equals nRT, where we have the P the P over the RT is equal to N over the volume, like this. Now N over the volume, this is moles over liters, moles over volume. And we know that moles is somehow related to mass, because that's grams per mole, right? And so we can say that N over V, that, that moles over volume, is equal to mass over the molar mass times the volume. And the reason we can do that is, is if we put the units in here. If we drop units in for this, that would be mass is in grams, like this, and then molar mass is grams per mole, and then we have volume, like this. And if we cross units out, we can see that the grams would cancel, and then the moles end up on the top, because it's moles below the line, below the line makes it up on top. And so that gives us moles over volume, moles over volume. From that, then, we can make this equation equal to pressure times our molar mass is equal to RT. Now, that's not real intuitive, but if we throw in our units, if we say that our units for pressure is atmospheres, and our units for molar mass is grams per mole, like that, and then R, that is, it's got some funky units on this, that's liter atmospheres over mole Kelvin. And then we have temperature, which is Kelvin. So there's a lot of units there, but if we cancel these out, we'll see here that our atmospheres cancel, and then our moles cancel, and our Kelvins cancel. So then we're left with grams per liter, which is mass over volume. Now, a oh, question. What's the lowercase m supposed to, th this here? Top. Top, 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 here. Oh, here, mass. This is mass. There's too many m's. Um, just mass. Just mass. Yeah, there's too many, too many m's. We've got moles, we've got molarity, We've got molar mass, and then because we're dealing with gases, we have millimeters. It's like we need more letters in our alphabet. Or maybe not. Yeah, no, I, I, I get it, yeah. Okay, so um, now, on a test, I would not ask you to derive this. I wouldn't ask you to do this. I just wanted to show you that it can be done so that you might believe I'm not making all this stuff up, that the units do actually work. So we do have an equation that tells us that density is equal to the pressure times the molar mass divided by RT. So then how do we use this? Well, we have a hot air festival in Duluth, and what they do is they bring these big balloons, they bring them down to Canal Park, and then early in the summer morning when the air temperature is fairly cool, they go in and they, they, they bring out these balloons and they have these big flames and they heat up the air inside of the balloon. And if we we look at our equation here, if we increase the temperature, 
If the temperature gets big, then our density gets smaller. So this decreases the density of the air in the hot air balloon, and then the balloon rises. And this is part of the reason why they do it early in the morning, is because the air temperature is very cool. So you have a big difference. Your delta T gets very large. So I've never done this. I'm, I'm terrified of heights, but I think it would be really neat. I've talked to people that have gone hot air ballooning, and they say it's kind of surreal because you're, you're up high, you're at altitude, and you're floating along, and there's no noise. You don't have like an engine running. And, and it's just it's really kind of a cool experience, and, and I'd like to try it. Now, that's one application of, of these gas laws uh, and density. The other one, uh, which is also very practical, is radon gas. Has anybody here heard of radon gas? A few people have heard of radon gas. Okay, so wh wh what context? What context have you heard of radon gas? What's the deal with that? It's dangerous, right? It's not good for you. It's radon gas. Like, if you want to become a superhero, breathe some radon gas, right? So what's the deal with radon gas? So radon gas comes from the breakdown of radioactive material. And here in northern Minnesota, we have a lot of igneous rock. That igneous volcanic rock has radioactive material in it, believe it or not. And as it breaks down, it releases radon gas. In fact, one of the biggest sources of radiation in your home could be radon gas. It could also be granite countertops. People in the geology department, for fun, they'll actually take a Geiger counter, and you can go to people's countertops, and it'll set off, depending on your countertop, set off the Geiger counter, because they could have radioactive material in them. OK, so in northern Minnesota, we have all of this igneous rock. It breaks down. It produces radon gas. And that radon gas then can leak into your house. And this is bad, because radon gas then can get on dust particles, and then when you inhale this stuff, it gets into your lungs. And then this radioactive material, as it breaks down, it shoots out uh, radioactive uh, uh, products and, and, and radiation into your lung tissue and can lead to cancer. And it turns out that radon gas is the number one cause of lung cancer behind smoking. And so this is something you're like, well, okay, make sure we, we avoid that. Now, fortunately, there is a way to avoid it. We have radon detectors. And so you can buy these things in the hardware store, and they recommend that if you live in northern Minnesota and you've got a basement where there's a lot of bedrock, you should have one of these things in the house. And, and then the question is, well, where do you put it, right? Do you tie it to each one of the children? Maybe like a little, you know, like necklace. Put it on the, you know, the dog collar for the dogs and the pets and such, right? And then that way, if it goes off, you're like, oh, okay, all right, time to evacuate the house. Or you could set it someplace in the house. And the question is, where do you set your radon detector? Well, we can look at our gas laws to determine this. We have this equation. Density is equal to PM over RT. So we have density is equal to PM over RT. And I'm just going to say air, air. And then I'm going to do density of radon. Radon, like this. OK, so P m over rt. And we can plug some numbers into this. And it tells us here that if we have, um, let's see here, air at one atmosphere, one atmosphere, and the molar mass of air, air is oxygen and nitrogen in certain proportions. But if we work it all out, it comes out to about 28.97. 28.97 grams per mole. And then R is 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres mole Kelvin. And then our temperature is, is 25 degrees. And 25 degrees, to turn that into Kelvin, we add 273. So that's... Did I say 25? Yeah, 25 degrees Celsius plus 273. And then we're going to do the same thing here for radon. And so radon is one atmosphere and its molar mass. I get, I get confused. When I look at the periodic table and I find element up here 86, there's Rn. But then over here on the lower left, there's Ra which is 88. Which one's radon? 
I've made this mistake. So it's like the elements on the top part of the periodic table I'm pretty good with because I use those a lot, but the ones on the bottom like, eh, a little sketchy, right? It turns out that Ra is radium, which is also radioactive and might cause lung cancer if you breathe it, but that's not the one we're focusing on today. So radon is element number 86, it's 222. So 222 grams per mole. And then we have 0 0.08206 uh, liter atmospheres mole Kelvin. And then our temperature is the same, 25 degrees Celsius plus 273. This is really squeaky chalk. Shame on you. Bad chalk. Bad chalk. Naughty chalk. Okay, there we go. All right. So, now we can do the math on this and we'll get some numbers. But before we do that, just going to pause here for just a second. Everything's the same except the molar mass. Everything else cancels out or, or is the same except the molar mass. And so just looking at this, we can see, well, this is a bigger number than that is. And so if this number is big, that means our density here should also be large. So without doing any math, we could just say that, well, the density is proportional to the molar mass. So the bigger the molar mass, the bigger the density. So radon gas in our homes, should it float or sink? It should sink, yeah. So where should we put our radon detector? You're thinking in the attic if you don't like, right, the family? No, it should be in the basement. It should be in the basement, right? Because that's probably where the radon gas is going to settle. And actually, in some homes where they detect radon gas, they put in a, a vent in the basement to try to vent out um, the radon gas. Yeah, so we should put that in the basement. Is a good place to put, put our detector. 